Thank you very much. Um, thank you to the ICC for the very generous invitation to come and talk to you today. Uh, thank you, Len, for uh, chairing this group. And uh, today I'm going to try to tell you a little bit of a story about how one traditional media company is wrestling with the changes that uh, are occurring from uh, across multiple different dimensions, change in the consumer, change in the advertiser, change in obviously the structure of the media industry, and as a result, how regulations may change. Um, and I come to this from a couple of different perspectives. I'm not a traditional media person. Uh, I have many layers of scar tissue, which uh, uh, I can at another time gladly share with you around uh, dealing with traditional media companies. Um, we had an enticing discussion with Robert Pepper and others last night talking about how the media companies don't get it and if they don't get it then they will get it in the end. Um, and so uh, how all of this actually changes in the context of an environment that we have so much change is something I'd like to share with you today. So today is not so much talking about things, but I will be showing you and sharing with you some of the things we did, some which worked and some which haven't. And I'd love to get your feedback later as to how you think some of these lessons might apply in your own jurisdictions. So hopefully I want to address the, the three things that are indicated in that first slide. Um, Hong Kong is my old home. I lived here for a couple of years. And I'm constantly struck by the optimism and the progression and the capacity to respond to challenges that this market really can provide. Um, change is not always bad, but it very much depends upon how you set yourself up to manage that change. So uh, while some people are building shacks, other people are building windmills in the winds of change that we see in all these industries right now. Let me talk a little about uh, Prime, just to put in context what we are, who we are, uh, and uh, what the experiments are that I'm about to share with you. Prime is a traditional free-to-air television linear broadcaster in regional Australia, and struggled with the idea that it had no digital assets at all, and had a diverse, widely spread, relatively small audience across Australia. How were you going to bring that sort of environment into some sort of contemporary offering uh, going forward? Well, firstly, we developed not one site, but a, a network of small, what we call hyper-local regional sites, which we'll show you in a moment. Um, the multiple sites to provide what the advertiser wants in terms of reach, uh, as well as social network uh, and user content to provide the relevance and the engagement of the user. Uh, we leverage this with the brand, which has some 20 years of relationship with people in regional Australia, and have eight out of the 10 top rating television shows currently in Australia. Um, I worked uh, in Yahoo in the United States as the first VP of the Commerce Group. And uh, going back into the late 90s, you know, we had a look at the traffic map of the world on the internet. And we found that it was made up largely of these huge, few huge, massive peaks of traffic, which over the last few years, the, the peaks have been getting lower in relative terms and the foothills are becoming higher as users generally worldwide become more experienced. So the portal model as it existed with a Yahoo or an MSN before was really important because people needed to find, had no idea what they were doing, needed to find their way to find those things on the internet. Now we have an explosion of content, but also we have an explosion of experience. Experienced users know what they want, and they will use search often to navigate to the things that they already know are there not because they don't know what's there, but because they want to find an easier, faster way of getting there. And so something like 70% of uh, Google's search, uh, advertising search revenue really relate down to sponsored search for people going to sites they already know. So what we have now increasingly is a more diverse, broad range of different sites 
There are still peaks, and the social media are some of those peaky bits. And what we've done with the creation of iPrime, which is the online extension of Prime Television, is to create <coughs> multiple local sites in a network, each different but all connected. Okay, so that's my perspective. This is where I come from. What are some of the generalized observations about media generally in this changed world? Well, the first is the fundamental media model, as we talked about before, has turned back to front. Media used to push content out. Now media, use, media is very much a process of guiding a user in, a guiding a viewer in, to help find content that they're interested in looking for. It doesn't need to be on television. In a multi-platform world, the role of the media company is to help the user find what they want. And it's all about the consumer being in control. And uh, we all have ranges of devices. We'll have iPods, and sometimes we will have 40-inch plasma screens, and other times we increasingly are exposed to more and more media choice, and we will multitask we will co-consume media more often. Uh, numerous accounts, Nielsen uh, in Australia, Yahoo internationally, indicate that the average amount of media consumed per day is something like around about 46 hours. So unless your day is longer than mine, um, it means that something strange is going on the counting. And what this counting thing is happening is that people consume multiple platforms simultaneously. The model means increasingly that when I have more choice and I have more devices that I need to get more relevance. And relevance in a media sense brings attention. It's the attention that's scarce. So on uh, Len's point about scarcity and abundance, yes, attention uh, is now scarce. Abundance is in the media content that's available to it. And so it's a fight for relevance. It's a fight for attention. When you have more attention, that, that will bring the users, and the users, because it's a social network and people talk to each other, they bring more users. And the more users bring targeted advertising, or they make the advertising work far more effectively, and that delivers the value proposition that drives so much content today. The advertising dollar will be there in the future, but it will change. So if you were in a media company today, what are the challenges you have? Well, sitting in a media company, giving this different sort of experience, it's how to keep the audience small enough to be relevant, yet big enough to be large enough to be a viable commercial proposition for advertisers. You increase the engagement, uh, the level of relevance with audiences by trying very often to make it more diverse, more targetable, and trying to target many more people in smaller lumps and smaller groups. And you try to increase the user involvement by tapping into different forms of social media. We've done a number of experiments in this area. We've experimented with federal elections, which I will show you in a moment. We've experimented with creating a Facebook for local grassroots sports, uh, which allows the tribal passions that exist in the under 16s soccer team to be able to end up being a platform for a dialogue between parents and kids. Uh, organizing what is a very loosely arranged set of commercial, sorry, social relationships and providing an ability for a mass advertiser to hit right across Australia with one master brand, at the same time have a distributor brand sitting alongside to this, that one suburb. We provide them that flexibility. And of course, in this, the basic proposition is, and the ad agencies struggle with this, advertising that's complicated to buy doesn't get bought. So let me take you into, the, into a little world. Imagine you're sitting at a fancy restaurant in New York City, and you're listening carefully to this uh, engaged couple who are sitting next to you having a chat about their tortuous relationship. Hey there. Long time no see. Looking good. Yeah. Let's just keep this simple. I want a divorce. What now? I think you heard me just fine. Come on. This is me. What's wrong? We don't talk anymore. 
I just put down a mill on a TV commercial just to talk to you. Exactly. You do all the talking. I never get a chance to talk on our website, can't you? Sure. If I want to say, order this product. See? It's not exactly a dialogue. What about the print campaign, hmm? You can't tell me you missed the billboard in Times Square. That was like a 200-foot-tall declaration of love. You're saying you love me, but you're not behaving like you love me. It's not genuine. I don't know. The agency said I was genuinely being funny. Genuinely being charming. They said you would love everything I did. You keep your voice down. You're not doing a radio commercial. Look, whether you're funny or not, it's just I've changed. And you haven't. I mean, we don't even hang out in the same places mm. anymore. You're not even listening, are you? Coupons. You want coupons, don't you? Look, come by the store. I got two words for you. Loyalty, reduction. <laughs> Am I right? That was it, wasn't it? Let's just hug. If you knew me, you'd know I don't care about that. Know you? Sweetheart, I know everything about you. You're 28 to 34. Your online interests include music, movies, and laser hair removal. You have a modest but dependable disposable income. Am I the only one not getting the problem here? I'm out of here. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. Look, I'll tell you what. Come back here tomorrow. I'll give you the chance to win a Bahamas vacation. There's a small chance, minuscule, but technically still a chance. Why don't you be like the old days? Thank you, Microsoft. Uh, why, indeed, can't it be like the old days? Well, one guy thinks it's not going to be like the old days, and uh, he believes that the change that we see in media is the equivalent of a one in 500 year change. Um, further on, he's added another view, which was perhaps uh, if we don't understand how to serve the needs of the advertiser as well as serve the needs of the user, then perhaps one other organization who's not in this room today might in fact uh, end up owning a lot of it. And indeed, given the diversity and the complexity of the needs that the market has, everyone has to partner with everybody because there's no one right solution. In a diverse market, there's tremendous opportunity to innovate and there's a demand to find whoever has the best idea and the best execution. So the fundamental assumptions around the business model has changed, and scarcity abundance has switched. Very much to Len's point, we've gone from few media to unlimited choice with an ocean of content available to anyone who chooses to get access to it. Attention has become scarce, and rather than looking at one media at a time, people multitask. One thing that will come for sure is that media companies will increasingly define themselves in terms of the data that they collect the knowledge that they derive out of that data in terms of consumer behavior, consumer preferences, who they share the data with, and in fact how that data is actually applied. But the consumer is not sitting there passively. In fact, the consumer is very, very reluctant to actually believe what the traditional media or the traditional advertiser is in fact saying. In fact, if you were in branding today and the leading branders worldwide uh, who haven't yet come to terms with really using uh, online media as a branding media, as a branding vehicle, say that uh, the brand is increasingly owned by the consumer and the brand is very much shared amongst them. And in fact, uh, the role of the brand is now to get the consumers to talk about their brand, to become interesting and relevant to them. Now, there's a tremendous example which I'll show you now.
So, did that work well? Uh, in compare, when uh, the objective of testing would people talk about by brand, there are three curves indicated on that uh, chart. On um, the blue curve is the conversations, positive mentions in blogs about the Dove brand. There's a yellow line at the bottom there. That's uh, one of its major competitors. Shall I go back to that? Okay, the yellow line indicates uh, Nivea at uh, the same time frame and the green line Garnier. So the three major competitors in the, in the industry, could you argue that one was more successful in terms of chat? Yes. Interestingly enough, when that stuff was discussed on television, you see this massive shift up in the curve on the right. So everyone's talking to each other. Three quarters of uh, shoppers basically seek out a rating before a purchase, and people trust recommendations from each, others, each other because they trust their peers. So as a, we've moved from network media to networked media, where really the role of the marketer is to engage in conversations about the brand, and the role of media, if you're trying to create that user engagement, is to drive relevance. This election is about big themes and local issues. It is these issues that will have a huge impact with undecided voters. That is why federalelection.com.au has been brought to life by iPrime. Together, iPrime and Prime Television have over 30 years of experience in broadcasting to grassroots communities in regional Australia. Federalelection.com.au is all about local issues, local campaigns and encouraging local debates, particularly in key marginal electorates. Key features include guest bloggers such as Peter Garrett, Mark Vale, Helen Coonan, Christine Milne and Lynn Allison. And then the Spin Cycle, a weekly video analysis from market-leading spin doctors, including former ALP advisor Gary Sargent, former New South Wales State Director of the Nationals Michael Preeby, and Ian Courtlang, leading strategist to Nick Greiner and other Liberal leaders. We also present the Gen Y perspective on the hottest issues through our collaboration with iVote. Roy Morgan Research and federalelection.com.au have teamed up to provide comprehensive polling analysis of every key electorate. Our users will also be able to provide real-time reaction to video announcements. Now the interesting thing, what, this, uh, the creation of this site was partly in response to a, an old problem embedded within Regulation Australia. Because under the legislation, you're not allowed to run uh, television ads or radio ads for three days prior to an election under the broadcast rules. But under telecommunications rules, which, by which is the internet is governed, you actually can run television ads quite happily up to and including the day of the election. Um, and so the ability to be able to take that form of communication directly into the hands uh, of the individual users in each one of the separate electorates, 150 electorates, which received different content and their own customised content from their local candidates talking about local issues and comparing their views against national views, actually drove an enormous amount of traffic. And when we added local blogging, the site took off. So it's very much media now is a question of sharing, it's a question of user creation, it's a question of it's not what you own, it's what you share in order to be a commercial success. And what you're trying to do is to drive more of that attention because you can convert that to income. Now, all revenue models don't have to be advertising driven. And in fact, uh, the next example is the music album released by Nine Inch Nails, which asked people to just pay what they thought it was worth. Uh, and in fact, they generated huge sales in uh, for the ten and three hundred dollar limited edition, uh, as well as uh, getting a number of people, very large number of people, uh, getting the free download. But interestingly enough, the people who bought the free download used it as a product sample, and then they end up buying the whole album. So this was a way of actually creating a broader market for that which you actually sold at a premium.
So increasingly, as the market structure has changed, we, we talk about the long tail, but another way of thinking of the long tail is that hundreds of markets of millions of people are now becoming millions of markets of hundreds of people. And that actually adds to that much better user satisfaction and consumer satisfaction. It also means there's a bigger market for more diverse content. What does it mean in policy? Well, policy has a role to play in terms of protecting the community from uh, spam and phishing, copyright uh, violations, and obviously online porn. But more broadly, one of the things I think that uh, we really need to focus in on is what uh, we do as a media industry in terms of building social capital. The more connected a community is, the higher the level of social capital, the more diverse that it is, the more it has the ability to respond to changes and create wealth. And in fact, social capital, unlike financial capital and physical capital, gets depleted by non-use, as distinct to those other forms of capital that get depleted by use. So thank you very much for this opportunity to present to you, and uh, I look forward to your questions.